children of Bodom. Bodom? Bodom? Children of Bodan. Bhutan. So, in my opinion, they're one of those bands that on paper, like, really should not have worked. When you consider all of, like, the seemingly incompatible styles of metal that they mix. Power metal, thrash metal with black metal with neoclassical stuff, like, industrial stuff. <laughs> But somehow, they pulled it off, didn't they? So today, we're gonna do a little, little one of my deep dives. You know, talk about the band a little bit, about their history, what makes them good, what made them bad. And then, we're gonna work together to create a definitive Children of Bottom album tier list ranking list. Tier list ranking list. I think I got into Children of Bottom when the album Are You Dead Yet came out. So I used to subscribe to <laughs> Metal Hammer magazine. One issue had, I think it was like a Spine Farm demo CD, like compilation. And like, it hooked me straight away. I was like, whoa! It's like nothing I've ever heard before. And I fell in love with this band straight away. I acquired all of their previous discography through absolute legitimate means. This charming strapper young lad here, Alexi Leho, God rest his soul. He was definitely one of the biggest influences for me growing up. His guitar playing really resonated with me on many levels, but also his like image and just general persona and the way he presented himself. And so I was obsessed with this guy for a long time. You know, I used to wear a black beanie like he did, steal my mom's nail polish. It's a good job my MySpace account has been long gone. It's definitely the time that I've been most affected by the passing of a, you know, a notable figure or celebrity, and it definitely affected me. Rest in peace, fucking legend. Let's get on with the discography. Something Wild, their very, very first album. I personally love it. The main thing is just like the mix of styles. Half black metal and half like neoclassical metal. Really cheesy and really fucking goofy. It's so good. It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Another reason why I fucking love Children of Bottom, they popularized the orchestral hit. That, that really sort of goofy sound effect, like ding. Yeah, so the vocals. The vocals are so, so bad on this album. So fuck yourself, die. But anyway, some of the highlights on this album. And uh, Red Light In My Eyes. Probably my favorite metal intro of all time. May I have this dance, please, young lady? Hate Breeder. Either this or Follow the Reaper is probably, by general consensus, their best, but uh, by most fan accounts. I guess it's like an all round improved version of something wild. They started to introduce the really cheesy, like, keyboard Euro synth sort of solos into it. Every song is good on this album. I don't think there's any stinkers. You see, the mix is so much better as well. Sounds like a bit more like you know what he's doing, right? You know, they're this all like heavy, pretty serious band, but they have these all like really jolly parts. They called their mascot Roy or something, right? Look, it looks like the fucking Saw guy. Look, it looks like Tobin Bell. It is, look, it's fucking Tobin huh? Bell. Fucking Roy saw. <laughs> Follow the Reaper. This is the album that really sort of like marked the start of their cliche Children of Bottom sound, right? It's the album where they like dropped a lot of the cool like neoclassical shreddy stuff in favor of a more sort of like thrashy, groovy, industrial kind of sound. This one has very much like a sort of a horror movie vibe. <laughs> They're just going to like the most jolly, like folky intro ever after. And also in Every Time I Die, I love the intro to this one. It's like the dissonance and stuff. You know, the little harmonized stuff at the end. So, moving on. So I think what they did on Hate Crew Death Roll is take that sound that they've developed and really refined it. Better written, the choruses are catchier. And they went for a more kind of like party aesthetic almost on this one. So, Needle 24-7. Sort of like big, folky, catchy melody. Yeah, yeah. This sounds huge. Oh! This is probably my favorite Children of Bottom lick of all time. 
the album that got me into Children of Bottom way back in 2005. Are you dead? Yeah. We're speaking, you know, completely objectively here. The overall package of like performance, songwriting, sound, the whole shebang. This is probably their best album. This definitely is their most accessible album, like by a long shot. And super hooky, the, the cheesy shit has been honed back even more. But yeah, the songwriting is super good. Stellar solos. <laughs> You got the title track. Oh! It's kind of an unusual song as well. It sounds very different for them. Probably the best Children of Bottom solo of all time. This is such a fucking slept on song. Next in line. You can really tell that they used up all of their creative juices on this one. Which unfortunately meant that the next album... Ah! Uh, things started to falter a little bit. So it's from this point onwards where they just start to sound like a parody of themselves. It just sounds like one of my fucking imitation speedrun things. Yeah, yeah, yeah! <laughs> and uh, this album is just like flat as fuck. Oh I listen to these so many times, I just cannot remember like anything that goes on in these songs. There are some moments that are okay. Like this bit's pretty cool. <laughs> like, I guess one of the only hooky bits that I can sort of actively remember after. I yeah. That's cool. Blood Drunk, Relentless, Reckless Forever, and Halo of Blood are just like, I just don't really care for these albums. They just like sound like a band that has like run out of ideas and like can't be bothered, which really sucks. This one, it sort of like carries on really where Blood Drunk left off, but marginally worse. And the mixing is atrocious. Like this album sounds like trash in comparison. It just sounds sort of like, ooh. I forgot to mention this again. What is it with the song names on this album? I know they've never been good with English, but they just like completely gave up. Like, what is this? Shovel Knockout, Pussyfoot Miss Suicide, Cry of the Nihilist, and then this one. Check out the song name here. North Pole Throwdown. Yo! Who the fuck came up with that? Polar bears fighting each other or something. Like, what's this about? Yeah, so I don't know. Th I, this album, like, really sucks balls. And I just can't really, like, find anything that's, like, redeeming about it. And then after that, they did Halo of Blood, which I would say maybe is, like, a step up. So this one has some aura right songs. It's sort of like, it felt like a, an attempt at like a return to form, which is cool. You gotta respect that. The title track is actually a banger. Halo of Blood. This is a sick song. Whoa! When this came out, I was like so happy to hear them blasting again. I was like, Whoa! I like this one. Scream for silence. Cool. This feels like a proper Euro Varkin metal sort of song. It's cool. This is definitely a step up, but it's still not great. It just kind of like peters off a bit towards the end. This is maybe the second most hilarious song title behind North Pole Throwdown. One bottle and a knee deep. What does that mean? It's not bad, but unfortunately, any efforts that the band made to rekindle, you know, some enthusiasm in their music again, uh, was completely scuppered when this came out. This is probably their worst album they've ever done. Not good. This is like a real step back, unfortunately. There are some okay songs like Morrigan. But yeah, like, I listened to this all the way through earlier, and I honestly, like, could not think of a single highlight moment in this album. <laughs> Bottom by numbers, you know exactly what you're gonna expect. But, thankfully, the boys turned it around and released this glorious album, Hexed, which is actually really fucking good. When this came out, I wasn't expecting much because I really fucking hated the last few albums, but I was overjoyed and surprised to find that I actually really, really enjoyed this album. Like a nice little throwback to their early days. I really like this song as well. I uh, this road. Oh, those harmonics. Well, you say this one doesn't have any bad song names, but kick in a spleen. It just sounds a bit weird saying a spleen. It's like you're just going outside and just like finding someone and then just fucking punching them in the spleen. Why would you do that? Another reason to like this album is that they started to reintroduce some of the old neoclassical elements from the band back in, which I was overjoyed to hear. The title track, you know, like the main theme. Yeah. Oh, yes. I kind of like this as well. That's nice. I think it's about time that we shove all of these amazing works of art into some pointless, meaningless, arbitrary tier list. Let's fucking go! So, Something Wild, the first album. I just fucking adore to death the mix 
of black metal and Yngwie style neoclassical metal. I think it's genius. It worked way better than it bloody well should have. <laughs> Maybe objectively, it's perhaps like a B tier, but I'm going to put it up to an A because I think it's a super fun album. All right. Hey, Breeder. They took this cool neoclassical black metal formula that they'd created in something wild, refined it, better guitar playing, better keyboard playing, better songwriting, I guess. Hey, Breeder. Any day is a fucking Roy tier album. Absolutely. All right. Follow the Reaper. So Follow the Reaper marks the dawn of a new era for the band. They step away from the sound that they started to create in the first two albums, like the cheesy sort of like power metal influence in favor of a more sort of like darker, atmospheric kind of thing. It's a Roy tier, but it's behind Hate Breeder for sure. Next up, Hate Crew Death Roy. In Hate Crew Death Roy, they took the direction that they started going off in Follow the Reaper, this brand new sound, but refined the heck out of it. Much better songwriting. Fucking amazing production and mixing, Alexi sort of starts to sing, which is super cool. Probably the album with the most insane guitar playing on, I would say. It is absolutely a Roy tier, and I think it's like ahead of Hate Breeder as well. Where is Are You Dead Yet going? So again, it's like a, another natural progression. Are You Dead Yet? They refined it again just when you thought that they couldn't get any better. The songwriting is absolutely world class. It's one of the best metal albums of all time. Banger after banger after banger. Not a weak song. I can't fault this album. Uh, I think it's like the most complete Hob album just in front of Hate Crew Death Roll. So, all right, so where would you guys put Blood Drunk? Where is Blood Drunk going? I'm not actually sure about this one. For me, Blood Drunk is really the departure of the band in terms of being good. It still sounds good. There's still loads of like great riffs and great solos and good performances, but the songwriting is just not there. All right, sorry to the Blood Drunk fans, but we're going with our gut instinct. It is a C, I'm sorry. Oh, it's Relentless next, isn't it? I can't remember what's on this one. Is it... Bin? Mm. I'm gonna go D. I think that's fair. All right, Halo of Blood. Where's Halo going? I feel like Halo is a step up from Relentless for sure. It's not D tier. It has some cool songs, but it's still kind of shit to be honest. All right, I'm gonna put it as a high C above Blood Drunk. Next up is uh, I Worship Chaos. I think this is an easy bin tier. I think this is their worst album. Fucking sucks, balls. It's going right in the bin. Okay, but things are looking up. The band's glorious return to form, Hexed. Where's this one going? I think it's not too far behind some of the classic. I reckon it's here. I think it's probably objectively better than something wild, I suppose. I'm going to lock that in, boys and girls. There we have it. The definitive, 100% correct, never to be changed or questioned, Children of Bottom album tier list. Before we go, I'll show you quickly what my personal Children of Bottom tier list would be. And my favorite is something wild, then I. Are you dead yet? I don't care for these albums at all. That's the order that I rank bottom albums in. Why is this like mouth so like fucking wide? Like? Roy. All right, mate. Do that. Do that. Do that. Nice one. Oh.